not just about the words that you're going to use in your page content. It's also things like if you have an e-commerce website, uh, currency is shown differently in different languages. In English, we say a, a dollar sign with a number. Thousands are separated by commas, and the dollars and cents are separated by a period. In French, the thousands are separated by a space, and the cents are separated by a comma. And the dollar sign comes after the number. I like using this example because if you look at the French value here, $1,234, there's a space between the one and the two. You can imagine that accidentally word wrapping and having the one on the end of one line and the two, three, four, five, five, six down on the next one. So you'd want to wrap that in CSS that makes it not break. One of the things you have to account for. Dates. Depending where you are in the world, we display dates differently. In the US, you use month, day, and then year. In Canada, we use day, month, and then year. In other places, we'll use the ISO standard, which is year, month, and day. So you want to think about how those are going to get displayed in different versions of your site. Same with time. 4.30 p.m. In English, we separate with a colon between the hours and the minutes, and we use a.m. or p.m. In French, you use the 24-hour clock and divide the hours and minutes with the letter H. Um, gender. While modern English grammar is accustomed to people being gender neutral, other languages do not share this trait. So when you're translating, some words in other languages don't have gender neutral versions, and you're going to have to work on the translation specific maybe to a user profile, things like that. There's a, there's a track ticket here. Um, this was submitted during WordCamp, or discussed during WordCamp US this year in Nashville about making changes to uh, some WordPress core to support better use of gender neutral words in the localization process. Script direction. So in English, we read words starting at the top of the page from left to the right, going down each line as we go. And this is the same with any language that has its base in Latin-based languages. Uh, so English, Spanish, French, Greek, Latin, they're all left to right. But when you get into some languages like Arabic, Persian, Hebrew, Yiddish, Western Punjabi, these languages are read from right to left. So you have to think about how you're going to lay out your theme to support that. Because not only is it the words, but it's the priority of things. The reason that we put our sidebars on the right-hand side is because when you're reading from right to left, what's on the right-hand side is the least important thing. Therefore, your sidebar. In your primary navigation menu, your most important menu item, like for example, home, is going to be on the left-hand side, the first menu item. So if you're converting your site to support uh, Hebrew, you're going to want to flip all of that around so that your sidebar is on the left, your most important menu items are on the right. So it's not just the placement of the words, it's the entire layout of the site. This is a, uh, it's not an old version of the site, but it's, this was a Government of Canada website, but if doing business with Canada, if you are in the country of Jordan, Jordan is an Arabic country. And so if we click on the language switching button, the second menu item from the left up top, it flips over to the Arabic version of the site. You will notice that the sidebar that had been on the left in this case, the primary navigation menu, has now moved over to the right. And the main navigation bar at the top where the language switching options, French and the Arabic button, are on the left hand side. English and French are now on the right hand side. So this template has everything entirely rearranged to support right to left languages. Uh, you also need to think about text length. So this was a real bug in WordPress 3.9, I believe, that when you install a fresh WordPress install on the dashboard, there's a button here that says customize your site. 
looks great in English. German words are much, much longer. So when you activated your site in German, this happened. The button went off the end into the text. So what we had to do, and a little bit of humble bragging here, this was my first WordPress patch, was fixing this button so that it didn't uh, over, right over the text and said wrap properly. Uh, this is very common. So when I'm working on French sites in Canada, I kind of assume that the French text is going to take up about 50% uh, more space than the English text does. So that's something to consider when you're you know, laying out uh, buttons and forms and things like that, is that you need to allow for longer strings and languages that have longer words. How do you want to have your URLs structured on your site? You might have example.com forward slash question mark lang equals and the language code. You might have each language in its own folder. Uh, you might have it as a subdomain, so jp.example.com for the Japanese version of example.com. Or you might have entirely separate domain names, mywebsite.com versus mostsecweb.com, being same, pointing to the same WordPress installation, but in two different languages. These are all valid options. It just depends, really, which one your preference is. How do you want to switch languages between websites? Do you want to include a language switcher, like this one shown here that has the names of languages with the flags? Do you want to maybe put that in the drop-down menu instead? Do you want to include the flags at all? You don't need them, it's just a visual thing. Uh, and in fact, that's one of the considerations we use a lot in Canada because the French flag for French, that's the flag of France. So we don't want to use that for Canadian French. So a lot of times we'll just remove the flags entirely and just have the language names listed. Uh, do you want to put it in your language or in the widget area? You might maybe decide that when you go to your domain name, you get a page which says, you know, welcome to my website, and you choose which language you want to start with. So what's your default language going to be if someone goes to your homepage? What happens then? What if you're looking at a post on your site that you don't have a translation for? What happens when you hit that language? You don't want it to go to a 404 page. So do you just remove the language switcher? Do you just send them to the home page in the other language? You, know, you have to decide what to do in that case if you're not going to be translating absolutely everything. Uh, query string parameters. Uh, query string parameters are um, everything that goes after the question mark in the URL that might modify how the page is displayed. Some of those parameters might need to be translated as well. Some of them. Uh, that control site behavior may be the same, but, you know, regardless of what language you're looking at. So you have to consider what's going to happen with those if you're developing a plugin, for example. So those are sort of general considerations uh, that you need to think about with multi lingual websites, regardless of whether you're using WordPress, another CMS, or even creating static pages. Uh, but now let's look at WordPress itself. So WordPress. And these stats are uh, up to date as of, oh, sorry, it's uh, December 27, as of this morning I checked. WordPress is now available in 179 different locales. Uh, that shocked me. Uh, last time I gave this talk was in December, and it was 110 locales at that time. So that's how fast the, the multilingual support in WordPress has grown. Uh, there's 56 of those translations are 100% up to date with the latest version of WordPress. Uh, the, other language, the other locales between 57 and 179 are in various states of being complete um, as the volunteer translators get time to update all of those strings. Uh, one good thing to note is that 51.918% of WordPress sites installed now are using a language other than US English. So this is not a, a fringe topic when you're looking at WordPress on the global scale. There are more non-English sites than there are English sites. So when you install WordPress, you see a drop down like this. This is where you pick from those 179 locales. And it tells you which one you're going to install. This is what your dashboard is going to show. This is what the theme is going to show if you're using one of the default WordPress themes. It's going to be in one of these languages. So although 
WordPress supports these 179 locales now. That's all about the WordPress structure and site, but it doesn't allow you to actually enter the content in more than one language. For that, there's a couple of different approaches that we can look at. The first approach we're going to explore are multilingual plugins. And there are a couple of options for these plugins that will help us actually create our content in multiple languages, or manage our content. The first one is called WPML. And this is a premium plugin that's uh, created by a company called Omnigo Systems. Uh, it supports translating of your pages, your posts, your custom post types, your taxonomy, your menu items, the text in your themes, and the text in your plugins. You can manage all of that right through the dashboard. It also uh, provides you services to help hook up to uh, third party translation services. See what that will look at later. Uh, WPML is the plugin that I personally use the most often. Um, it because it supports you know a wide range of features and you know it's, it's quite a mature product. Uh, so this is the one that I tend to use. So when you're using WPML, this is the list of pages on my site, and you will see uh, right now I'm looking at the Hindi version. Along the top, you'll see each language installed on this site, and You'll see the page title here, and then you'll see buttons that allow you to edit the translations in the other languages. Or if there's a plus sign, it means there is no translation available for that page in that locale. And you can click on plus to start the translation. When you're in the post editor, uh, it looks almost identical to uh, the regular post editor, except in the sidebar, you're going to have a new language section. And this says that I'm editing a French Canadian version of a page called Terms of Use Agreement. And so I can now go in and modify all this text separately from the English version. But it knows that they're linked, which allows the language switcher to kick in and drop back and forth between the same, uh, the same content, just in the correct locale. Now, when you're using WPML, what it does is actually creates a separate post ID. So if you're looking in the WP posts table in your database, there is a separate entry for every locale, for every post. So that's how it's doing its navigation back and forth. And therefore using the default post editor because it is really just its own post. Uh, WPML allows you to choose your URL format, like we were talking about earlier. You can pick whether you want some different directories, different domains, whether you want to pass it as an uh, argument uh, in the query string. Uh, so you can set that up right from the plugin. You can choose which custom post types you want to translate. So uh, there are reasons why you would not want to translate a post type. You know, obviously your pages, your blog posts, those make sense to translate. If you're running WooCommerce, your orders are a post type. Well, you don't want to translate, you don't want to have the same order translated into multiple languages. An order is a thing regardless of language. So you would turn off translations for your orders. Same with taxonomies. You can choose which taxonomies should be translated on the site and which ones are not. When you are modifying your taxonomies, uh, this is the modified taxonomy editor that allows you to enter the translation. So saying this term in English is this word in French. So it can make that association again. So uh, for example, your post categories, it knows which ones are which to be able to switch back and forth. Uh, if you are using WPML, a little tip I have is there is a setting uh, in the plugin settings called make themes work multilingual. And what this does is it takes, remember, I said a few minutes ago that it creates a separate post ID for every locale. So if you were working in your CSS, if you're working on your theme, and you had a selector that was for a specific post ID, you would have to manage every variation of that. It doesn't make your theme very maintainable. Uh, the feature of adjusting IDs goes in and adjusts the post ID that's displayed in the HTML to be the same as the original post for all the locales. Really handy if you need it. However, it's also very uh, compute intensive to do that. I, uh, 
I was working on a site and the home page, I was doing a performance audit on it. It was doing 750 some queries against the database to load the home page. It's a ridiculous amount of loading against the database for loading one page. I turned off this feature because they didn't need it and it reduced the number of queries down to about 250. So it, because it's doing those post IDs on every menu item, on every widget area, on the post itself, so it, it ends up saving you a lot of confusion of turning off that feature if it's not needed. Another plugin we're going to look at is Qtranslate X. So like WPML, it supports pages and posts, and it has some post types and taxonomies and menus, and your settings, and your widgets. This is a free plugin, though, so you don't have to pay for it. When you are working in the post editor, uh, instead of having those columns with the pencils and the plus icon, you just have a language switcher that shows the flag up, the flags up top, and when you click on any of those, it changes the list that you're seeing to be the language that you picked. The post editor works a little differently in that uh, above the title and down by the custom fields uh, and down by the meta boxes, you have those language switchers again. So you can click on those languages and on the fly, it will change the content of those meta boxes or of the post editor or of the title box to show you that content in that language. So unlike WPML, the way Qtranslate X works is it is using the same post and it's using hidden short codes to separate every locale. So if I were to disable this plugin and look at post content, you would see a short code for whatever the short code is to start the language for, for English, and you'd see all the content. You'd see another short code with all the French, another short code with all the Spanish. Same thing in the title, same thing in the meta boxes. So if you turn this plugin off, you end up with short codes littered throughout your site. Uh, but it does make the editing experience nice in that you're staying within one screen and just toggling which language you want to view as you edit. So yeah, here's the example of what it looks like if I turn that plugin off after working on the site. It has every translation lumped into the same post, just separated by short code. Here's what the widget editor looks like with Qtranslate X. Uh, so again, you have the flags up top, pick which languages you want, and on the fly, it changes the content uh, for that widget area, so you can modify it in that language. Uh, the menu editor, again, same thing. Pick which language you want. Work on your menu layout. In, uh, in WPML, you create separate menus, and then you associate them to the locale that you want. Uh, Qtranslate X also supports URL modifications, so choose which URL structure you want. And it also supports general settings. So if you go in WP Admin down to settings in general, your site name and your tagline, for example, are things that you would want to be able to translate. So it puts in those same language selectors and you can go and name your site in each language, change your tagline in each language. Uh, Polylang is another free plugin. Uh, and they also have a pro version as well. This also supports like uh, the post pages, uh, your media library. Uh, Polylang supports, uh, taxonomies, menus, and widgets. Uh, so, more like the WPML style, uh, Polylang gives you the different languages and the editor buttons as columns in the page list. And in the editor, uh, it shows you the available translations for that post. It does treat every post as a separate post ID, they're separate posts in the database, so it doesn't rely on short codes the way you translate. Here's your taxonomy editor, and so you can put in your translations in the different languages for the different terms. And uh, same with the menu editor. So you would create your menu. Now this is using uh, the 2017 theme, and the theme usually would have two menus included with it, top menu and social links menu. And what this has done now is taken every language that you have installed on your site, every locale, and duplicated those menus in every one of those languages. 
So when you create a menu, you can then attach it to the right menu location in the right locale or locales. You, if, uh, if all your wording was the same in three locales, for instance, if the menu was the same, you could attach the same one to all three. Uh, that might be really useful for the social media links menu where you might point to the same social media link. And this is the language settings where you can add locales, name them, choose the text direction, choose which flag you're going to associate with each language, and which order you want those languages to appear in in your language selection. And there's also a string translator. So this is where you can go in to modify your site name and your tagline, the date formats that you're going to use. Uh, they just do this uh, in this table format. So every language that's installed and every string that's available, you can just go through and modify the settings. Uh, finally, this is, uh, this is in Polylang. You have the URL format as well for picking how you want WordPress to uh, lay up the URLs. You can also choose uh, your synchronization settings. This is how uh, Apollo Lang expands this. So there are certain fields that when you are duplicating a post, working on a translation of it, you want to make sure that those settings stay matched up. For example, taxonomies. If, because this is treating every post as a separate, every locale as a separate post, if you go and add your English post to a uh, category, let's say, called WordCamps, you want it to take the French version of that post and also add it to the French equivalent of the WordCamps category. You don't want to have to modify each one of those separately. Uh, same thing maybe with your featured image. You want the same image to be synchronized with all versions, assuming that image doesn't have words in it, because then you would have to do those separately. Uh, choosing the page template would be another great example. You're not going to use different templates uh, for different locales. You'll use the same one, but you want it to, if you change that template, you want to change across all. So that's what the synchronization setting uh, is in Polylang. You can choose, depending on your use case, what you need to synchronize and what you don't. Um, this is just an example of their language switcher. So in the top right-hand corner, you have the, the two languages you can switch back and forth. So that covers the, uh, the multilingual plugins. Uh, there are others out there. Um, and there, there's ones that have come out recently that I've yet to investigate and you know, see how they work. But the, the ones that we've just gone through, the WPML, QTranslateX, and Polylang, have, have been around for a while. They're well-established plugins, and uh, there's lots of support out there for them. Uh, the other way of doing this, if you don't want to use the plugin approach, is to use WordPress multi-site. That's a perfectly fine approach to doing a multilingual website. And there's two ways you can do this. You could install a separate version of WordPress for every locale and just build separate sites and link them all together. That would work. Seems a little messy to me, but it would work. The other way is to use WordPress multi-site with a sub-site for each language. So this is the, the main WordPress install, the network, and we have sub-sites for each language. How many of you here have used WordPress multi-site? So, WordPress multi-site allows you to have a single WordPress install, but then have sub-sites in those sites that share the same plugin, share the same user accounts, uh, and you can just tweak the permissions and things like that. But what it allows is that you're not maintaining separate installations of WordPress for every site in the network. Um, an interesting way of looking at WordPress.com is essentially a massive multi-site network. Because uh, you can log in with one set of credentials and have multiple sites that you're managing within that network. So there's two plugins uh, that I've uh, played with, the Multi-Site Language Switcher or Multilingual Press, which are plugins that allow you to link back and forth between translations in a multi-site network. So it will say, you know, post ID 20 in site one is the same as post ID 43 in site two, and allow you to switch back and forth Um, so looking at the different ways that we've done, WPML, QTranslate, Polylang, and Multisite, I have this comparison chart, which is in my slides, which I'll share the link with later. But it's kind of my, my little cheat sheet for the, the pros and cons of each one of these approaches. So that's how you trans 
translating all of your content into Site B, the, the allowing for switching back and forth and allowing the post editor to work in these different languages. But you also have to think about your themes and your plugin translation. So in order for plugins to work in multiple languages, they have to be internationalized. And this goes, this is theme translation. Uh, WordPress provides functions to retrieve these strings in the right locale. So if you're a theme designer or a plugin developer, for example, this little clip of HTML would just print out the word, this is my string, in a paragraph. So instead of doing that, in a multilingual approach, you would have to wrap, this is my string, in the escape HTML function, passing the text domain. This allows when PHP renders this page to say, oh, this is a string that is translatable. I now need to go look this up, find the translation for it, and return back that in the language that we're requesting right now. So instead of just spitting out static text, it's actually now rendering this through the PHP engine to go and find the translation. And there are uh, a whole pile of functions to do this kind of thing. In JavaScript, for example, you use the WP localize script function to pass in an array of all your translated strings. And then in the JavaScript code, you reference that object and that string key to display the text that you want. So uh, here I'm passing in a translation array of some string, saying it's some string to be translated, localizing it, enqueuing it, and then in the JavaScript, I can reference object name dot some string, and it would display some string to be translated in whichever the current language is without having to write separate JavaScript that goes with every language. Um, there is a whole pile of documentation if you are a developer, a theme designer, on how that internationalization process works in the WordPress developer handbook. Uh, so I have a link there. Now, actually creating the translations for all of these strings in your themes and your plugins, these are managed by a set of files. Um, this is using the get text translation system, which uh, consists of three types of files. POT files, which are your templates. PO files, which are the localized version of all the text that's found in that template into, every, into each specific locale. So you would have a PO file for each locale. And uh, ML files, which are machine object files, those are compiled versions of the PO files that would run faster. Uh, many popular themes and plugins come with translations already provided. And if not, you can manage your own translations through uh, plugins or third-party applications. Uh, PO Edit is the third-party application that I like to use when managing translations. It's a premium product, uh, available for Windows, uh, Mac OS X, and Linux. And when you open up your template file, it lists all the strings that are found, and then you can go in and enter your translations, and save that as a new PO file, and drop that into your plugin or your theme folder. When you get the pro version of PO Edit, it also gives you some interesting things like statistics, so how many words there are in that template that need translating. Uh, this is really useful because if you're working with professional translators, they usually charge by the word, so you can use this to guess how much your bill's gonna be before you ask them to do the work. Uh, the other great thing about the pro version is it will read a WordPress plugin or theme and make a POT template file out of it, so you don't have to create that file Now, content translation. So we've talked about your themes, your plugins, and actually writing, you know, create, allowing for the WordPress admin to manage your posts. But what about actually writing these words? Here's my one request. Please stop using automatic translation. Google Translate is not your friend. It, it's pretty good at giving you, here's what this word is in another language. But when it gets down to doing here's a sentence, or here is a paragraph, or here's an entire blog post, it makes a pretty good mess of things. If you ever want to test that theory, open up Google Translate, put in a sentence or two in English, translate it to another language, and then translate it back. You are not going to get your original phrase back. Uh, it, it can create quite a mess of things. So what you want to do is work with professional translators. Um, as I said earlier, they usually charge by the word. 
but they are not only experts in translating to that language, but they may be an expert in a specific locale. You know, where you want someone who knows a specific variant of English or Spanish or French. And they may also be a subject matter expert in your field. If you're writing about website development, you probably want a translator who understands the terms that we use on a day-to-day -day basis and what those terms are in that locale. Uh, you even get to the point where you know there are the official words that are used for certain terms, but that nobody actually uses in day-to-day -day life. You want your translator to be able to know the difference and pick the right terms that they're going to use in that translation. Uh, one tip when hiring a professional translator, I like to use the same translator again and again. Like if I'm working on a project over a long period of time, find a translator you work well with and keep using them because their choice in words that they use or their writing style, you want that to be consistent throughout your website. You, if you start changing translators, you're going to start seeing one word used here for something and another word used for the same thing in a newer part of the site. Uh, WPML has built in a service called I Can Localize. And uh, Polylang uses a service called Lingotin. Both do a similar thing in that when you finish writing a page or a post, you can say this is ready for translation, and it will submit your post through your I Can Localize or your Lingotech account to your translator so that they know oh, there's content ready to be translated. They'll automatically do the translation for you. This is a real person, not a, not a machine. And when they're done translating, that translated content goes right back into your WordPress dashboard for you to approve and then post through. So it's really streamlined that process of writing a post and getting it translated into multiple locales. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is contributing. As I said, WordPress is down in 179 different locales. Uh, how did that happen? Well, just like every other pre piece of the WordPress ecosystem, whether it's core development, theme, plugins, documentation, WordCamp speaking, or it's all done by volunteers. And the, um, the WordPress translation is done by a team called the Polyglots team. And their job is to ensure that as all these new versions of WordPress come out with new features and changes, that all the strings that appear in every screen are translated into these 179 different locales. Um, you end up with uh, you know, different roles within that community, whether you are just volunteering to edit a string in a certain language because you spotted a mistake, whether you're an approved editor for a specific language, or maybe you've just been approved as a string translator for an individual plugin because you're working for the company that developed that plugin. Those are all roles that are available in the Polyglots team. Uh, this is a photo of just a few of that team at WordCamp Europe in, uh, at their Contributor Day in 2016. Uh, I say these are just a few of them because there are currently 544 global translation editors. 200, 300, or sorry, 2,384 uh, plugin translator, plugin translation editors, and 23,099 contributors to the translation team. So those 23,000 plus people have maybe just submitted a fix to one string that was wrong in a certain language. But that is a massive number of people helping make WordPress available in all of these different languages, and you can be one of them. Uh, looking at Glockpress, this is a uh, program developed by the WordPress community. It's available at translate.wordpress.org. And it allows you to pick any version of WordPress, uh, any theme that is in the WordPress repository, any plugin that is in the WordPress repository, the WordPress meta site, so wordpress.org, go to uh, the WordCamp website, <coughs> any of those. Uh, as well as the apps, so the, the official WordPress apps uh, to manage your site with. And you can go into any of these sites and help translate those right through the website. So you don't need PO edit, you don't need to know how the POT files work and all of that. You can submit translation suggestions right through this website for any plugin available in the ecosystem. So then if you're, or theme or anything, so if you are a plugin author or a theme author, you can then sign up and say, this is my plugin, 
And you can then go and take all of those translations provided by the community and use them as part of your, your plugin. Thank you very much. I hope this talk has given you some insight in how to create multilingual websites in WordPress. Uh, I will put these, these slides are available actually now on my website at seanhooper.ca. And uh, I'm available for any questions. Uh, I think we've got a couple minutes for questions right now. Good. Yep. Uh, yeah. So I know that you don't represent the plugin makers from early on no, in the talk. But I have a, actually I have a list of questions. I'm not going to ask all of them because that would be weird. Um, can I override the flags in any of those plugins so that I'm showing language codes instead of flags? Yes. So uh, I think in most of those cases, those flags are shown uh, as uh, CSS background images. Okay. So you can override those in CSS. Uh, one of the plugins I also believe you can pick the flag from the media library, if I recall correctly. Okay. So I don't have to necessarily hack the plugin. No. No. Okay. You, you might. You can probably do a CSS override in most cases. Yeah, I, I know I have clients, if I showed them a, um, they're Brazilian, and if I showed them a Portuguese flag, I'd get stabbed. <laughs> it's, it's the problem we have in Canada using the France flag for yeah. French. Same problem. You probably don't like being stabbed either. No, <laughs> I, I, I yeah. try to avoid that. Yeah. Um, and then I have other, I, but this one I do want to know, you didn't talk about inline, um, like different languages inline in the code. And I, that might not have been within the scope of your talk, which is totally fine, but do, are there tools out there to make it easier for authors who are writing in one language and then have to language switch in the middle of their page? So for example, if you wanted to include a quote that was in another language. Sure, yeah. Uh, in that case, really you're looking at going into the post editor in the HTML and wrapping that block in, uh, in the HTML, HTML block, line, you can do a yeah. lang equals and uh, let it know, and that way screen readers and things like that will know to uh, to pronounce the words in those inline strings in that other language. Yeah, which is the technique I have to use. But if there was a plugin where my authors could just say, "No, this section is now French," and they just click the button. So not that if you're not aware, aware of one, that's fine. Not that I'm aware. Of. However, my brain is going, "This is a perfect this use is a plugin for Gutenberg blocks." So with Gutenberg coming out. Right. Uh, I could very well see a text block being created that would have a language drop down as one of the options for that block that allows you to say, this is not the default language, it is, mm -hmm. and you know, pick your appropriate language. That, that would be an interesting approach to doing it, actually. Yeah. I haven't tried it, but it's thought it's awesome. I no, it's, it's, a, it's a good thought to have, I agree. Yeah. So yeah, the, the plugins don't support it, um, but yeah, that is one of those cases where you have to figure out. Even in your... Um, if they probably only do the inline language switching in your language switcher so that it would know how to read because that there again it codes and it knows. Yeah, exactly. But for the post content, you'd be back to doing HTML again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? So they're being so they're being emailed. Are you using Jetpack or something like? What, what's sending out these notifications? I have Jetpack, okay. and I don't know whether there is a promotional tool that by default every time there is a new post because it's recorded as a new post, right? right. The translation. How do I stop that? So Jetpack does have a feature that sends out those notifications. So that could definitely be the source of this. And if you're using plugins, for example, like WPML that stores every translation as a separate post ID. I could see why that's happening. Um, so you might have to, hmm, I, that, that would really be a situation depending on the combination of plugins and, and stuff that you're using. But the other thing there is you would want your subscribers to actually be signing up to right? a specific language. Because even the text around, you know, the subject line of that email that I get, you would want it to be in the right language. Most of my subscribers are English speakers, but they have family members or friends that speak another language, and they would be interested in the specific post. The blog is about their updated. So whoever finds it appropriate will forward the post. 
Yeah, so in that case, I would probably, and there again, very plug independent, but I would look at filtering the notifications that you'd send it so that it only sends them out on one locale. I can do that. Yeah. I'm on dot .com, not on dot .org, and I can't afford dot .org for right now. And I don't have access to this in .com. Yeah, and so, yeah, on .com you're going to be limited in the customization you can do there. I unfortunately right now don't have a, a great solution for that one. Yeah. Uh, and there again, what, you know, we could figure something out for sure on dot .org. Uh, dot .com, I don't know of a solution for that. Uh, a plugin doesn't support yeah, we have two people from Automatic here who are actually working on support at Chrissy, 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 Chrissy yeah. and Sam. So you can go to the registration table. That's an app for, for okay. and that'll be Thank you. Yeah, there was a dot com team, so yeah. they might be able to help. Okay. Yeah. Thank you much. Start, so we can go stretch and one more session to go. So thank you very much again for coming.